there are two kinds of revelation. And I want you to like think about this. This is going to take a little bit of brain juice from all of us. There's two kinds of basic revelation that came to prophets. It's directly the speech of Allah, the direct speech of Allah. And another kind of revelation, the, le the least form of revelation is actually dreams. So true dreams also came to prophets. The highest form of revelation is the word of Allah itself. And the, the, the lowest form of revelation, the least form of revelation are true dreams. Okay? And the Prophet ﷺ received both. He received the Qur'an, which is the word of Allah, and he received dreams. Now here's the thing. When it came to protecting the dignity of a fellow believer, Allah revealed the Qur'an. Allah Azza wa revealed the Qur'an. And when it came to restoring the dignity of the Kaaba, the Kaaba, Allah didn't reveal the Qur'an, Allah revealed a dream to the Prophet ﷺ, لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤْيَا بِالْحَقِّ that Allah Azza wa Jal sent a dream to the Prophet Sallallahu that turned out to be true, that he will be entering Al-Masjid Al-Haram. Now think about that. The sacredness and the value of the Kaaba, the, the value and the, the respect that we have of the Kaaba is so high. And yet Allah, to liberate the dignity of the Kaaba, revealed the, the truth of that to the Prophet Sallallahu in a dream. The lowest form of revelation. And to restore the dignity of the fellow believer, and actually our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, Allah Azza wa Jal revealed ayat of the Qur'an, the highest form of revelation. This helps us understand even the words of the Prophet Wasallam, which one time he turned to the Prophet, he turned to the Kaaba and said that the dignity of a believer is dearer to Allah than you. He turned to the Kaaba and said that, you know, لَحُرْمَةُ الْمُؤْمِنِ أَعْظَمُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ حُرْمَةً مِنْكِ he said to the Kaaba that the dignity of a believer is more sacred to Allah, is more grand to Allah than your dignity. Now imagine, I've said this to you before, how much respect do we show to the Kaaba? When you would get the honor of being in the presence of the Kaaba, would you ever imagine being disrespectful or being condescending or making jokes about the house of Allah? Or I'm just saying, would you ever even think of doing that? You would be terrified at the idea and yet, when it comes to your fellow believer, somebody else, it's so easy to just talk. And yet in our religion, this, the dignity of the person sitting next to you in the masjid, the dignity of your friends, the dignity of family, these are people in your circle, people you like, people you don't like, doesn't even matter. Their dignity is more sacred to Allah than even the Kaaba. And so here, he says, وَتَحْسَبُونَهُ هَيِّنًا وَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عَظِيمٌ and now, so what should you have done? Okay, you're in this gathering, and somebody started, started through in the spark, and everybody else started running their mouth. Now you're in this gathering, what are you supposed to do? You've heard these ayat now. How are you supposed to respond? And so Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَلَوْلَا إِذْ سَمِعْتُمُهُ قُلْتُمْ How come the very moment you heard this kind of talk, the very moment you heard it, you didn't respond. You should have responded. How, did you, how should you have responded? مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا أَن نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا here the Qur'an is telling us to be socially awkward. Here's how. You're in this gathering, everybody's having a good time, nobody seems to have a problem talking about somebody else, and you're in the middle of this gathering, and you hear this kind of talk, and you decide to uphold the word of Allah, and you get up in the middle of all of that gathering and repeat what Allah says. Because Allah says, the moment you heard it, how come you didn't say this? Which means, I better say this. Now what is that? What is that he wants me to say? He says, مَا يَكُونُ لَنَا أَن نَتَكَلَّمَ بِهَذَا It isn't our place, it isn't appropriate for us to be talking about this. It is wrong everyone, we shouldn't be having this conversation. Like you get up and you become the weird one that is now telling people that are older than you, people that are younger than you, people that are more knowledgeable than you, people that have bigger beards than you do, people that have longer hijabs than you do. You're talking to everybody and saying, this is wrong, we shouldn't be having this conversation. That's not an easy thing to do. Because before you speak up like that, you're like, what are people going to think of me? Are they going to think I'm some kind of moral authority? Are they going to pass judgment on me? And if it's so easy for them to talk about this person, if I say this, guess who they're going to talk about next? That's going to be me. <laughs> so what should I do? And this is the time to remember, فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِي Don't be afraid of people. Be afraid of me, Allah says. Allah is extremely upset with the one who didn't get up and didn't become awkward. And didn't get up and say, we can't be talking about this. I don't care if I was invited here as a guest. It doesn't matter. We should not be having this conversation. 